It's the final three days. Oh, man, I can't do that without Justin. Uh, I don't have it. Yeah. I don't have it, man. Well, I don't have it. What's three days left for? It's just, bro, the end of the biggest sale that we have ever done in Mind Pump history. Well, you're just giving away some crazy shit. You, yeah. get free, you get a lot of free stuff. You actually get three things for free. You get the No BS six-pack formula for free. You get the fasting guide for free and the nutrition guide for free, which by the way, the nutrition guide is going to be revised. No big deal. Just saving you like 200 something bucks. Yeah. So when you get the nutrition guide, you'll get the update for free as well. So it's all free. And the way you get them is you enroll in one of our most popular bundles, what? either the RGB bundle, which includes MAPS Anabolic, MAPS Performance, and MAPS Aesthetic. It's basically nine months of exercise programming all spelled out for you, or you take it a step further and you do the MAPS Super Bundle, which includes those three programs, plus MAPS Prime, which, in, which has a compass test in it that helps you assess, uh, assess your body, identify imbalances, and design your own priming program that you do before your workouts. It also includes MAPS Anywhere, which is our no equipment required workout program. It's a great bridge between workouts. So if you've been working out for three months with weights, do a month of MAPS Anywhere, go back to weights, watch what happens. So enroll in those two programs, you will get... Again, no BS six-pack formula, fasting guide, or nutrition guide, absolutely for free. You can find them at mindpumpmedia.com. And don't forget, there's only three days left. Go check it out. I'm actually super, super excited about This is going to be our first Paleo FX. Legit excited because every time you've brought up Paleo FX, you say it's your favorite like event that you, you go Fitness to Fitness event year. all year, right? Yeah. No bullshit. Like this, this event has been as every time I've been, it's changed my life in in a, in different ways. Every time, that's from, a major from, statement. It is. I mean, from networking to just the information that's shared there. Like anytime you get that many influential people in one place sharing information, and it's extremely accessible to the masses via live stream and and being present there. On top of the business leaders that are also sharing their story there. Like if you go in there with an, with an open mind and, and, and are really engaging, you can get so much out of Paleo FX. I'm so proud to say that some of our boys are representing there too. The Rob mm-hmm. Wolf, the Ben Greenfields, ben Greenfield's Mike there. Salemi. I mean, oh, we've got, yeah. Like, how, are, how often yeah. do you those get are, all the- That's some MP family right there out there representing Paleo FX, man. Yeah, man. If you, how many, often do you get all those guys in one place at one time right. you know, sharing their most up-to-date research and what they're working on right now? Like Rob's sure. new book, Wired to Eat. I cannot wait to get my hands on that. And I've got to just slam it out before Paleo FX. Dude, people are saying such good things about that book, by the way. But mm-hmm. a question, is this, one, is this one of those conventions where it's just lots of information? Or is it those conventions where it's just lots of fun? Or is it both? Like, What, what do you expect going to Paleo FX? Well, they give you so many options. Okay. Right? So it's going to be similar to Burning Man. Like, it can be whatever you want it to Whoa. be. Whoa. <laughs> Not that extreme. You wow. just like, sold the fuck out so, of it. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. So there is. I mean, they, they, talk, they talk about um, you know, evolutionary psychology. They talk about... You have the ability to go do like natural movement classes, breath work classes, yoga classes. But then if you're if you're an entrepreneur and you want to be there to to learn more about what's going on in the space, oh, wow. you can meet every all the very cool. C- so you can introduce the small trends brands and research. And exactly, that's cutting edge. Exactly, and what and how how people are growing their brands in the modern landscape, which we know in the social media world changes constantly. So what's what's moving? What's you know you're going to see like last year there was a ton of like um, kind of paleo bake, baking goods there, right? Well, this year I have a, I predict there's going to be a lot of bone bone broth companies there. There was very mm. few of that. So where are the trends at? What's the current science behind that? What's driving these trends? That's all super now important. as a consumer. And everyone's how, really everybody's really accessible. How do really you great. like how do you navigate? So uh, are, are there like all these like little rooms that are running like private little things? Is there a front main stage where one person is speaking to everybody? Is so there, it there's, mo- there's multiple stages. So there's going to be panels and speakers. There's, okay. kind of two, there, and there's, there's a stage upstairs and they may have changed this since last year, but they have a big keynote stage downstairs in the very back. They have a stage upstairs that's a, a medium size and they have like a panel stage in the main conference area and the conference area is kind of like a big square of all kinds of different businesses and food and organizations and whatever um, which is fucking awesome and right in the middle of that is like kind of your your strength and conditioning or moving floor now we is. we got tickets for free because Justin sent nude nude photos to the people that yeah. organized this but what would they it cost baby dicks it took a lot of courage <laughs> he <laughs> said baby dicks <laughs> <laughs> what would it what, yeah. hold on hold on a second what, what does it cost it, it, is, it is like a baby right yeah. A nine, baby nine, donkey nine, dick. Nine, <laughs> if you know no, what I mean. no, you ruined my joke. I was gonna say nine pounds two ounces. Anyway, can you get <laughs> what, so yeah. So I got where your do back, you, Justin. Where Thank, do you sign up? You, where do you sign up for it? Like, where can people? Well, find first it? of all, when's it happening? 
So it's May 19th to the 21st, Austin, it's, Texas. It's in Austin. Austin's a great town, by And the I will way. say, Austin's a great town, and usually, you, sometimes you go to these events and it's like in a cool town, but it's off in the fucking middle of nowhere. It is downtown Austin, one of the most beautiful parks are, we have is, is around the Palmer Center. So oh, cool. you're not only getting like to go to Austin, you get to really experience Austin. You can walk to a lot of awesome bars and restaurants that are right there. A lot of gorgeous humans over there. It's okay. Yeah, I do all right. And great, bar- <laughs> great barbecue yeah. too. Great barbecue, yeah. great Tex-Mex or Mexican food, interior Mexican food. Um, you know, if you guys want, we can do a, when we get down there, we can go and drop in and just sit, talk about all the restaurants that we get to, that we, where you should check out. If you Hell make yeah. it, if you make it, reach out to me um, and I'll, I'll help you out with some restaurant recommendations. Excellent. Ooh. So how do they sign up? How do they go, go to this? How do they Paleo, buy tickets? PaleoFX.com. So it's Paleo, P-A-L-E-O-F, the letter F X. The letter X dot fucking com. extreme. F Beautiful. For fuck, X for extreme. If you guys, if you guys want to see the Mind Pump crew, hang out with us. Come say hi. We'll be in a booth with you for. Uh, uh, we'll be in a booth. We'll be, but we'll also be up up uh, on the balcony doing some podcasts. We'll okay. be all over the yeah, place. Yeah. We'll so be walking around, cruising around with Ben Greenfield a little bit too, right? Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll be at Ben yeah, Greenfield. That's our boy. Mike Bledsoe and Barbell Shrug. We'll be hanging out with those guys too. So we'll Tate be, Fletcher and the guys over at Caveman Coffee if they get to make it down. Yeah, yeah. Cool no, talk to Tate too. Those guys are supposed to come around. Was trying to grab wa- Rob, but Rob is like, I've, he's got so many things lined up. Rob is essentially like a Jesus at yeah. this. Event, yeah. he's just everywhere. And he's trying to hide. He runs around. He, you know, but yeah, it's it's yeah. it's cool, man. There's, Excellent. There's, there's so much. There's he so much paleo. So Looking much forward to it, big time. Yeah, Can't make sure you guys come guys say there. hi if you guys are there. If you want to pump your body and expand your mind, there's only one place to go: Mind Pump. Mind Pump with your hosts Sal De Stefano, Adam Schaefer, and Justin Andrews. Connor. Oh my God, Sal. We Connor, got how you doing, bro? You're sitting in. Justin's chair. Can I tell you something right now? For, it, two it, things. Two things. Number one, our boy Justin's very sick right now. Uh, we're just going to send him some positive vibes. I'm sure he's okay, but positive he's vibes for our boy. His guts out. He's not feeling good, man. Not yeah, good. it's uh, it's probably an STD. Is what I'm thinking. A flare up. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, all joking aside, we hope he's going to be okay. I'm sure he will be. The guy, the, he's uh, he's strong like a moose. But number two, you are sitting in the probably the most magical chair in this entire room. I feel it. Yeah, I was he, in here yesterday too, but yeah. this now I'm feeling like this chair has some. You some look more serious, handsome. Serious, serious power. Can you it. feel the like the what is it that's in there? Mojo. Is it mojo? It's like mojo. Does it make you want to sing? I don't think it has a name. I don't think it can be put into words. The feeling that I'm feeling. Right well, now. where you're right now, where your your balls are resting, mm. is where Justin's <clears throat> balls are resting, and he mm. has. Uh, magnificent balls. That's at least what. Really? The, yeah, Connor. So, do, Connor, so you, do we know? You're touching the same area. Do we know when your when is your podcast supposed to launch? What's the projected date? Supposed to launch. So we would like to have it submitted to iTunes by next Friday. Okay, so that so, would be the. But the that would fifth. okay. Just you know how long that takes, right? It takes what? Yeah. Would it take Doug another week or two after about that? About a week or two after that. Yeah. So we're looking how, at like. Is that how long it took? May. Do you remember, Doug? Yeah, it was a couple weeks. A couple weeks call. afterwards. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll call a long time ago. And you guys started to... So it's, it's actually gotten shorter now. It's like three to four days sometimes. Really? But it, sometimes it can take 10. I'll call, just, who, who, call, who told you that? The yeah. internet. The internet. <laughs> oh, if it's on the internet, it must be See, true. Adam? <laughs> yeah. A forum somewhere. I got another one of me on here, bro. Yeah, know, is, another one of these. Oh, I found it on Google. It must be yeah. true. Yeah. Fucking hell. <laughs> well, uh, Great, just what I need today. Well, what I'm so... I, I'm really glad and I'm, I'm, I'm so anxious to get it out, but I have... What twelve episodes now? Oh, so wow, just, you, yeah, we're 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 cranking, man. We're are still you doing gonna, the work. Yeah. You're gonna release ours as one of the primary, like that's the big. It'll one be right. the first four that get released. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, it'll be the debut. So this <laughs> is the first time people are hearing about it. What's what's the name of your podcast? So the Pleasure Monkey Podcast is the is my new new thing. Yeah. Um, what's the podcast gonna be about? Sounds inappropriate. Mon- monkeys and pleasure. No. A little bit. So. Essentially, what we are as uh, human animals is just pleasure-seeking machines. Who came up with that stupid name? <laughs> <laughs> that you have to listen to the podcast to find out. The yeah. full story is the full story is there, and it uh, definitely does not disappoint. <laughs> uh, wait a minute. So we're we're pleasure-seeking machines? Yeah. I mean, we chase we chase dopamine spikes. We we want. It's essentially how we we build our lives around how we can achieve pleasure and fulfillment. You know, but the real challenge is understanding what truly pleasure is to you and what components of your life give you satisfaction, give you fulfillment, give you pleasure. And if you can identify those and invest heavily in those, you can live a more pleasurable life. Some people some people get stuck in the not pleasure part, but the stay away from pain. 
Yeah, yeah, and that keeps putting you in kind of a scarcity mindset, doesn't it? Does this it? explain why I roll over first thing in the morning and I check how many people liked my picture from last night? It could be. And that, it, could be it, a, that could be a fleeting pleasure-seeking action for it, sure. Okay. Yeah. Can you, let's it give pretty us, much sets my day. Last let's give, it, give Adam a psychological breakdown with that. What would you th- what's wrong with him? Why yeah. does he do that? Well, you when you when your phone vibrates or makes a buzzing if noise, I have or you less, get a if like I have photo, less than two hundred and fifty likes over the night while I sleep, it will ruin my day. Really? Just miserable all day long. All day. <laughs> <laughs> That's super unhealthy. <laughs> 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 Could you imagine? I, people, a lot of people give a fuck about that, bro. I know. There's yeah. not a lot to say. Like, I don't know. Not, not yeah, a lot of breakdown. Like, There's like, that's just not see, good. The, the look he's looking at me right now. Is he serious right now? I need to help him right now. <laughs> Adam, Adam, Adam our, our boy over does he really connect Adam to that? Adam goes through and he like clicks on every person that liked his, uh, his picture and then he looks at their profile and he's just like, oh, thank you. <laughs> thank so you. much for that. <laughs> thank you. I think he's more. I think See he just tomorrow. looks at. I think he looks at their photo and says, "You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, baby girl." He, he says that to the, to the mirror. <laughs> yes. I caught him the other day. He was looking at the mirror. And he's like, "You're welcome, world." <clears throat> and then you walked away. So we've like, had, we, we've had you here for uh, four days, three four days now. Yeah, how have you yeah, enjoyed your time been here? staying over it's at my place? Time, yeah. What uh, give a little rundown? Um, what's been like for you over here? Katrina cooks really well. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. It's great food. She's not joking around. It's been a great time. I mean, just soaking up because you guys are what two years ahead of of the, of launch. Is you guys and y'all have y'all put together some things. It's it's nice to be around people that can help me kind of overstep some mistakes that were inevitable. Um, in the, in the launch process mm. and then being able to have these conversations, listen through podcasts that I've had recorded, get feedback. That's been so valuable. Invaluable. Really? So I really appreciate you guys having me down. It's been awesome. You've got a lot of natural talent. Is that really what it is? Yeah. You've got a lot of natural talent for reels. <laughs> yeah. uh, are you fishing for more? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> you know, really? I don't know. I'm always Tell that when the word talent is always a funny, a funny thing. To well, do. well, what I mean by that is you're. Well, you suck less than we did when yeah. we started. Let's well, let me ask you a question. Have you always <laughs> been a talker and charismatic? Uh, I didn't have a choice. To be honest mm. with you, so it, it kind of came from the necessity. The fuck does that mean? So, <laughs> fuck, you have a cho- of course you have a choice. You can be well, a I mean, you, so you're, we're seeking pleasure and validation, and include a lot of time inclusion, right? So that's where if I if I to, to expand on that idea, um, I grew up as kind of like a fat, awkward dude. You were fat, yeah, really, yeah. I was a fat and awkward, yeah. That's weird. So so my I would so, never guess so that. you look for what I you know what a lot of people call social currency. Mm. So if you're really good at sports. And that is how you make friends at an early age. That's your social currency. That's your value. If you're, you play the guitar, whatever it is, if you're funny. So you, you, what you'll find if you look back in your like childhood is you had, you probably had a thing that that helps you make friends. And for me, I was kind of you know, out of desperation, like figuring that out. And I've, I've reflected on that through help from, from some, you know, meditation and other sources, and just kind of figuring out. Oh, like I was super loud. I would say things that were somewhat either like taboo or obnoxious because that was fun. At a, at a young age, and that got the attention that I needed, and that helped me make friends. So that I kind of kept that loud, mm. and that turned into which spun into as I got older into like a care, you know, quote unquote charismatic personality. So because you developed I honed, it. I honed that, yeah, I honed that kind of extroversion into into something else. Well, yeah. let me ask you this: How do you recharge? Let's say you're just you're tired, you're feeling kind of down. Do you recharge by going out and being on? Alone, or do you like to be around people? Be around as many people as possible. That's yeah, an extrovert. Yeah. See, that's I'm, an extrovert. I'm, I'm, I'm a pure. I'm a pure extrovert. And there's times where like I'll have to go <clears throat> if I'm if it gets too, if I get too busy mm-hmm. in my head, and then I'll have to go by myself. Sure. I go to myself. To, I go by myself to wind down. How long did did it take you to put that together that you were? I uh, hung out with Mike Bledsoe like three times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so it was, it was later. It was later on so, in life. So, Bled, really yeah, Bledsoe has been a, a great mentor with for me. So um, we spent a lot of time together for a couple of years. Just. It, by happenstance and, and did a lot of work together. So having that guy around, and he's been on y'all's show before, and great epi- that's a great episode we were listening to today, um, really helped me understand what extroversion was, identifying things within myself, because he was he was in the same business. I looked up to him uh, and had had he had had similar kind of experiences and, and was just trying to make it all, we were all trying to make it all make sense at the same time. Yeah, It's really cool yeah. to see uh, people in, who are into fitness or into the, the wellness, fitness, health, performance, you know, that whole umbrella, yeah. who are also um, smart, self-aware, uh, growth-minded people because unfortunately or fortunately, fitness is so visually um, driven that a lot of the leaders in fitness, that's all they are. 
And I don't necessarily think maybe that's because that's who they are, but it should, maybe that's because they, they, that's all they develop. They know that that's what the business is. And so you don't meet a lot of, I think maybe that's where the, the meathead stereotype comes Absolutely. from. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, meeting guys like Bledsoe and you uh, bl- blows that stereotype away. You should see, it's funny, you know, me and Adam have talked about this several times. We will interview uh, a scientist or a doctor or a researcher or an author, and you can tell you right away the guys that don't listen to Mind Pump, so they're like, okay, they see our press, we send them a press report or whatever, uh, press package. So Me- see, media kit. Media kit, there you go. So it sees, like, they can see how many downloads or whatever, and they decide, oh, okay, this show is, you know, it's got some reach, so I'm going to be on the show, and they have no idea what, really what it's about. They just know it's in the fitness category. And when they see us, you can tell right away they're like, oh, okay, meatheads. You guys are idiots. <laughs> but within 20 or 30 minutes, they're like, oh, shit, we're having fun, having great conversations on different topics. And uh, it's, it's, you know, I understand that because being in the fitness industry, you don't see that, you don't see that that often. Like there's not a lot of guys like you and like Bledsoe. Stands out when you meet them. It stands out quite a bit. Yeah. And I think a lot of times you probably got, you, you may not notice this, but you probably have better interviews because they come in thinking they already understand what kind of person you're going to be. They kind of put you in a category based on just, you know, snap judgments. And when you throw them off a little bit, you probably catch them off guard and get some really great responses. Dude. I, and I used to do the same thing when mm-hmm. I was coaching CrossFit. That's why I, I, I say that because I would, I would understand. I, I, t- I looked at myself objectively. <laughs> I was probably like 25 or 26 and understood like I was filling these classes up and I was doing great. And um, I was like, why is that? And it was just because and, – and I started to really unpack it. And I un- looked at myself as like how other people saw me. I took a step outside myself. And I was mm-hmm. like, I look like a – you know, I'm 6'4". I, I did CrossFit. I had long hair. I was like – it was just – I played this kind of character. I played up this kind of bro character. But I also had spent the time and put the work in to to understand people's emotional intelligence. What it's you know try to understand the whys behind why they're even in the gym in the first place, aside from what they th- what, the reason they think they're in the gym, which mm-hmm. is very rarely the case. Um, the, the reason they're actually there, <clears throat> and it's funny because you you can actually get deeper faster with people if you kind of initially seem to be what they think that you are. And then surprise them. Down well, the think road. about that. It's just like when you go to the movies, right? There's nothing is worse than somebody telling you how amazing a movie is before you go see <laughs> exactly. it, and it lets you down. But if someone tells you like, "eh, it wasn't very good," I'm not, you know, you're not, and then you, but you still want to go watch it because it's a movie you're interested in, and you go watch it, and you're like, "fucking a, that was a great movie," because well, you expected it to be exactly. shitty, and then it impressed you. It's right? easy. So. To, it's easy to impress people and come across as real smart when they think you're stupid at first. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> this is part a, of, this way is better part way of to say what I exactly is, the same thing. This I just part said. of this part of our strategy yeah like if people if, if we're like hey we're three scientists you know they could then they'd leave and be like those guys are idiots you know yeah. or, or, if you, or if you come off like you're overcompensating like oh i know i look like a meathead but like let me tell you all the things that i know right. like immediately that's going to put people off too because then sure. you're then you're threatening their now that's idea a, of what now you that, are. There, there's something uh a good like helpful uh tip right there is i i remember i felt that i felt myself doing that i remember telling the boys mm-hmm. this when we first start like our first like really like intelligent like authors and scientists that were coming on the show like i'd be the first one to admit that there's this little bit of an intimidation like those guys are fucking brilliant you know most of them got 15 20 years on me really really intelligent dudes so i i always and and i knew that they were already kind of judging us or even if they weren't judging us i knew that we probably came off as meathead guys so I felt like the first half of the podcast, I'm like having to like sell myself or when they first came and we're like literally before we even light the mics up, I'm like, like rattling off our accolades and who we are and what we do. I'm like, what? I fucking hate that. I was like, well, I was like, I got to stop doing that. And I found myself doing that a lot when we first started because of that. It took a while before we all settled in and realized like everybody's fucking human. You know what I'm saying? Like these yeah. guys, that's brilliant. And, and the more brilliant somebody is, I find that that's their, their scope becomes more narrow. Like when you're when you have like this when you're like these super intellects, the guys that are like working for NASA or just just brilliant, brilliant minds, they tend to be just super brilliant in in that in that realm. And then their their spectrum is not quite as wide as some other people. I've met more people that are just kind of easy going down to earth, maybe not as brilliant, but then have a much wider spectrum. So yeah. you start to realize that everybody's fucking human. Yeah, you know, and people, man. and you know it's it's funny. It's like when you're, you know, we all know people like that, right? People who are not your what your typical cool or charismatic or whatever you know you would what you would consider those things but they're just confident with who they are and so they're magnetic you know what i'm saying like you'll you'll be taught like i had a, I have, i've had several friends where i would go out and these are people who they don't dress cool they're not super attractive or nothing spectacular about them but then we go to the bar or restaurant or whatever and they're just so comfortable with who they are they just attract 
like 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 magnets. They attract people, and it was because they were very comfortable with with themselves. And, is it because know. they bought bottle service or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> throwing money strategy. everywhere? <laughs> no, it's just because they're com- they're they're really comfortable with with who they are. And you know when when you have to, when you're trying to sell yourself, uh, it, it, people see they they sense that they sense well, that you're not comfortable. It makes it makes the whole environment uncomfortable, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's something even rec- as of recently. And I, and I always put myself in challenging situations. Is I was laying on a towel with like a few of my friends, and we we're just shooting the shit. And I was like, man, I don't have to try to do anything right now. This is I was just present in the moment, and being like, this is feels really nice. <clears throat> like I'm just out by the creek, and you know, and in, in Austin, and it was like, man, you know, I, was, I felt like I'd been try. I was kind of exhausted from having to try so hard for certain, some things for such a long time. It was the first moment that I realized like how, how nice it is to just, to just be and not have to worry about anything else. Well, listen here, you're already talking too much because you're in, ju- <laughs> you're in Justin's seat and you're overstepping your boundaries right now. <laughs> you're, some you're, you're responsible for one liners and, uh, Deep making, jokes. yeah, and making, making good music. Yeah. Making sure you make fun of me when I make words up. That's the only thing you're supposed to do. <laughs> yeah, <whenever. laughs> Unless I look at you. So yeah. Doug, what's up? Bring on the fucking burn. <laughs> Right up, all you bearded men and all you bearded ladies. This quad is brought to you by Big Top Beard Company, whose all-natural beard oil products not only make your beard smell amazing, but feel amazing, too. Their organic essential oil blends transport you to manly places like the mountains, the desert, the sea, and beyond, all while encouraging a lot of beard nuzzling to boot. Mm. Buy it for yourself or as a gift for that special bearded someone at BigTopBeardCompany.com. Enter the discount code Mind Pump for 33% off at checkout. All right. Our first question is from the Girls Gone Wad podcast. One of our favorite podcasts. We love them. They're asking for you guys to talk about the body weight set point and when men and women want to fight where their body naturally wants to be. How do you coach people in setting and accepting realistic goals? It's a good question. This is a a really, really really good question. And uh, I had... So... We've talked about this many, many times uh, on the podcast, and we've, this is a, a very important subject to us uh, as a podcast, and we discuss this uh, on our own, even off air. One of the difficulties with this particular question is, how do you communicate this effectively to people? Like, how do you get people to get it? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not effective telling people, just love yourself and just be who you are and be happy with who you are because they're they don't they don't get that they're they're not they're not well, happy it, with who it, they not are. Not even that. It's also this is hard to really to visually see too and understand and grasp. Like who's to say that I can't be ten pounds lighter or have ten more pounds of muscle on me? Like that's a tough thing to understand how to read and feel. Right. It is, and so I had this just uh, remarkable breakthrough in how to communicate this. About two nights ago, um, I oh, was having shit. a deep conversation uh, with my girlfriend about this very subject, and uh, I was asking her a few questions, and I said, "Okay, let's let's picture this now," because we were talking about how people, you know, clients are, you know, we're, we're telling them to eat intuitively and to nourish their body, but they still would want to eat certain things that weren't good for them, and but we would tell them it's okay if you do every once in a while; it's not a big deal, and. But how do I judge what to do and what not to do? And I'm going to gain weight or I'm going to lose weight. And, you know, what's the deal with that? And I said, okay, let's let's take a step back and let's first consider our all of our, as human beings, truest expression of ourselves. Now, the true a true expression of yourself is going to come from a place of acceptance and love. It doesn't come from a place of insecurity. Uh, it doesn't come from a place of fear. Um, those aren't those aren't the truest expressions of of yourself. Those are all based on other things. So, if we get all that stuff out of the way, and you're truly expressing who you are on a fundamental level, God, that's hard. Very difficult. But <laughs> really think about it. But really think about it. Like if you sit down and think about it, it's not as hard as you think in terms of understanding. Now, doing it is difficult, but understanding is not as hard. Like if when people sit down and really think about that, their truest expression, typically, most people will say. I'm a kind person. Uh, I love to be loved, and I love to love. Uh, I I I want uh, you know fulfillment and happiness for myself and others around me. Uh, I love my kids. I I you know I I love myself. You know these are the expressions of of my truest self. Now, what does the physical representation representation of that look like? Okay, if you are truly expressing yourself 
from that standpoint, the physical represent, representation of that particular person, the body that would go with that, looks like someone who is rested, healthy, balanced, somebody who is comfortable with themselves, who eats healthy, not because it's healthy and not because it makes you lose weight or gain weight, but because they love themselves. It's the physical representation of that person looks very fit and healthy. Now, is that going to look different from person to person? It will. But you, one thing you have to understand is nothing is going to look better than that. Nothing for you will look better than that. And we've all seen this. We've all seen the not healthy representation of ourselves and others, even if that person is lean and trying to build muscle. Like We've all known that man or woman who over diets, super shredded, but you look at them and you can just, you sense that they're not healthy. You can sense it's not coming from a good place. And they don't, the physical representation doesn't look as good as it would if they were coming from a healthy place. I've done this before. I've gotten ultra, ultra shredded and I've gotten all these striations and stuff. And then I've gotten to the point where I'm really just expressing my, my true self. And people will tell me like, man, you look amazing right now. Like you look really great. And the funny thing is that's not the goal. The goal really is just to, to, to understand uh, who I really am and to treat myself that way. And what, what you end up finding is you, you, the foods that you desire to eat change and it happens very naturally. And so I've talked about, you know, being fit as a side effect and it literally is a side effect. Now this means that I'm not eating because I'm trying to be fit. I'm trying to be lean. I'm trying to be muscular or even that I'm trying to be healthy. That is also a, uh, a condition. God, I feel like I feel like you went too deep too fast. Yeah, and when it's, I, when, it's, but let me explain. When I when I see this question, I think like when I think of set points and where I'm going to be more physical, right? Because you're getting very deep right now, and I and I and I think you're 100 percent right. I just think that most people won't be able to identify with this yet because they're not there yet. And I think there's there's physical things that happen to you first that help lead you into this direction that you and I have already been through. And like a, a, a lot of people are either going through or yet to even uh, get here yet. And I'll use myself and I'll use a, an ex-girlfriend of mine as a really good example of the set point thing. So uh, I remember when I, I was dating this girl who was competing and uh, she, she worked her way all the way up to the national level, had an incredible physique, <clears throat> but she did not have a, a like women's bikini body type. And what I mean by that is like she just you can t I can tell by looking at somebody if you're built to do bodybuilding, if you're built to do men's physique, if you're built to do women's bikini. That's not to say you can't do it because she fucking did it just like I did men's physique. But I can tell you right now, I'm not built for it. And that to me is what when we're talking about set points and what, what our body is kind of built to do. Like I know we've kind of thrown some manotypes out and that's like not that's something that's kind of of the old. Right. But there's still some some truth behind that, that your body has this like set point or comfortable place that it wants to be. And what Sal is saying, like that, that's the, the place you, uh, you eventually want to get to, to where you, you don't even really think about it. You're not focused on this outward appearance. It's just, uh, you know, more internal, but first to get there, a lot of people need to, to, to learn, to read the signs that your body's telling you physically while you're trying to get there. And the example I'm giving with this girl is that when we were dating and she was competing, I remember watching her like literally, and she was a trainer, mind you. So she was smart. She had her she had her masters in kinesiology. So, you know, she knew what the fuck she was doing nutritionally, training wise, and and not only that, she's dating me. So together, you know, she's <laughs> she we, together. She's got plenty of knowledge to get there the right way, right? And I remember watching her diet for her show, and just she could not get her body small enough. Like she walk she walks around as a, a lean 170 something pound girl, like lean, like, you know, still like 11% body fat. Yeah. But she, to get that stage ready look, she needed to push down into the single digits of body fat. And you could just see that her body did not want to be there. You could see the way her face looked. You could see that what she had to do to push herself to get to that limits. And to me, the, these are these signs that the body is telling her that like, that's not healthy and natural for you to be there. Now, you could go there. You could force the body to go there, and you could push beyond that. And some people want that because they're identifying with somebody else who has a body type that can do that or looks like that. And I think that's where you're going with, like, learning to connect those dots and understand, like, oh, man, like, 
you know, you're, 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 you, if you just love yourself and think about like what makes you happy and, and, but people, a lot of people aren't there yet. They're not there. They, they don't understand. And that, to me, there's, there's physical signs that tell you right away when you have to push a body behind, but beyond its limits and, and it's giving you feedback of it's not responding anymore. You're doing cardio for an hour plus a day. You're eating a 1500 calories or less and it's not changing very much like that's your body pushing back saying like feed me i need more i'm not healthy and for me like my set point was is the opposite direction right like i just my frame is not made to hold on to 220 plus pounds of muscle on it like i did it i built that but i i i never in my life looked so fit and been so unfit at the same time and you know, and I know it because my body told me like my hips hurt, my, sh- my back hurt, my, you know, everything on me was achy. And I mean, and I was force feed, I was feeding myself so much just to hold on to that mass. And when I don't think about food and I just eat when I'm hungry and I eat the foods that I, you know, that are good for me, whole natural, my body weight, my body weight tends to kind of level out where it's at right now, which is about 205 to 210 pounds. So yeah, I can be 230 and 240, but it's not the natural place mm-hmm. that my body wants to be. Well, I think you look at a lot of this in the simplest way to kind of meld what you guys are talking about together is ask yourself why. Like if you want to change your body, especially if you want to change your outward expression of who you are as a person to other people, there's probably some kind of feedback you're getting either from the mirror, which has no emotions, which is just your literal projection of yourself, and you're going to f- feel this so. But if you say you want to put on 10 pounds or lose 10 pounds, why? You know, and if it's if you're a guy and you want to put on ten pounds, which is going to be, you know, pretty pretty common. If your if your end goal is to get more attention or to get laid, there's probably some other parts of your life that you could address as well that could actually result in some success in that department if you really understand the true intrinsic why behind wanting to change your your body. You know, now if you're competing, that's one thing because if you value competition, then that's then you you can put your body in your kind of vibrancy second. To compete, if that's something you truly value, you've kind of already assessed that. So when I when I coach to this, okay, because that's she's asking about coach. When I coach and I'm talking to some of this, because I've had this conversation with people that have hired me to get them ready for a show, I explain to them and I give them, I share my story. It's like, listen, I can coach you to do whatever you want to do. So if you want to compete as a bikini model, or if you want to be a men's bodybuilder, like I can teach you the steps that you need to do to get on that stage and compete at that level. Now, what I'm going to be real and tell you is, listen, just like I was not built to compete against LeBron James, you're probably not built to compete against those women bikini. You were probably built to play volleyball or whatever. Like I can look at a body type and I could tell them what their body type is more fit for. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do those other things, but also setting realistic goals for your body type and understanding that that's not that may not be a strength. That may be a goal of yours, and that's fine. Be okay with proving yourself. Like to me, like the most rewarding thing for me was just getting to the professional level. Like a lot of people ask me like, oh, why don't you keep competing? And what, you know, do you not want to kill, keep going? Or what about Olympia? And all? like, I don't give a fuck about that. Like I proved to myself that I can get on a stage, compete with the best in the world and in a category that I don't even belong in. <laughs> like that was enough for me. Like that for me was like, I did it. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I proved I could do it, but it wasn't what my body wanted to do whatsoever. I just wanted to prove that I had the discipline and the ability to program design at that level to take myself in something that I was not designed to do. But I nowhere near would want to stay in that. It would not be healthy for me to do that. So I think coaching to that is just being being honest with those clients. You should know as a, as a good coach, a good trainer who's been doing for years is be able to look at body types and just and being okay to be candid with that. Like, listen, you don't have the body type to do this. We can do it. Let's do this. You know, let's do this. But be okay with you not looking like the girl that you have your screenshot or your your fucking computer your computer screensaver because you idolize her and you guys have nothing like you're nothing like each other. So you're never gonna look just like her. But guess what? We could take your body where it's at right now and we can completely morph it and change it and make it do incredible things. Just know that it may, may not be your body type to to look like that and be like. You well, know what? The sad thing is too, if you chase somebody else's that body type or that physique or whatever, when you get there, it's never what you actually thought it was you're, you're building it into something that that's if you even if the best case scenario and you attain it you're not you're, you're just chasing you're chasing bullshit look right? it, you know well, I, it was pretty awesome, i always right? wanted to get uh, <laughs> yeah, i always it's wanted pretty to fucking get, rad i thing. always wanted to get bigger right i always wanted to build muscle i wanted to get bigger i look i'm six foot i've gotten my body weight up to 230 pounds no joke i have the pictures to prove it and no i won't post them but i've definitely gotten 
really, really big, really, really heavy, super massive, super strong. And uh, it changed my self-image zero. It did nothing right. to make me feel. I was chasing a feeling that did not, could never come from my body. Exactly. It could never come from the way I looked. And if you're, that's it, like, you know, Connor, that was, I mean, excellent. Like, ask yourself why. What are you looking, what do you think looking this extreme is going to give you? Are you looking for happiness? Are you looking for confidence? Because none of those will come from that. But you, but but you got to be able to say this though. You have to be able to say that. What if what if you what if I hired you right, and I said to you like I just want to prove to myself that I can take my physique to the this level and get there. And that's sure. a, and that's a, that's an very honest, different right. Very very different. Because you got to be okay with that too. There's you do. No, there's no because I, I I I can do that and not identify with it. No. And, and be attached to but it. But it's very different and it's rare. It's actually quite rare. Like the vast majority of people listening to this podcast, the vast majority. Would, will never compete. Right. And those that do compete, who are listening right now, for the most part, many of them suffer as some form of uh, you know body dysmorphia. That's what probably drove them to compete in the first place. Uh, competing is a ve- competing, especially presentation type sports like bodybuilding and bikini and all that stuff. Uh, they are inherently um, unhealthy. Inherently, in the sense that what you need to do to get where you need to go, and number two, you are one hundred percent scrutinized. From a visual standpoint, your self worth can be very easily connected to what they say you look like and how good you look like. <laughs> nice picture there, Doug. Uh, Doug just <laughs> Doug just put a picture of Sal on, Sal on the <laughs> and it's the Stay Puff guy. Oh, that was me when I was two thirty. <laughs> yeah, it's uh really you know uh, you have to you if you're seeking happiness, you're seeking confidence, uh, then get those things before. Uh, you 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 decide to get you know change your body and what will happen as a side effect of it is your body will actually start to change. Separate your body image from your self image. That's a very important note. You can't uh, you can't confuse the two. If your body image is your self image, I don't care how you look. At some point, you're going to have a shitty self image. We all age, our bodies change, and there's always someone out there that we think looks better than we do. So you you've got to separate those two things. Yeah. Just be okay. I, I think the majority of people too are, are that we're talking about here that aren't going to compete. That are just looking. They're, look, they're looking at Instagram or whatever motivate whatever their means is for like finding motivational shit on their phone and chasing those little things like here and there. it's almost just like a distracted kind of ADD version of pursuit of goals. And you've got it. You, you, like what you're saying is turn that back in on yourself and and find fulfillment there. And then then yeah, you have what like some authentic ambition towards some some goal. Yeah, I've and that's met feels so much better. And I've met people, and they stand out to me. That's why I remember these people. Not a lot of them, but I've met people who uh, have gone down this journey. Uh, there was one lady in particular. She was 48 years old. Worked out one of the gyms that I managed. And then there was a guy that was in his 70s uh, that uh, I knew who really uh, encompassed this. And these were people who'd been working out their whole lives and they'd gone through this journey. I remember specifically talking to them about, uh, about this and it didn't resonate with me then because I wasn't ready to hear it. But the way they looked, like the woman, for example, she was 48 years old. She had long hair, didn't dye her hair, so it was, it was gray. It was like silver and gray. She was very healthy and fit, but she moved uh, very fluid, uh, almost like she glided. When she moved across the floor, sometimes her workouts seemed intense with weights. Other times I would see her doing yoga and stretching, but she had this air of confidence around her. She had Mm -hmm. wrinkles in her face, but, uh, they were, you know, it looked like it built character on her. She wore, she was very unassuming with the clothes that she wore. It wasn't like she was trying to present herself uh, any particular way. She was just very comfortable with herself, very healthy. And she put off this incredible energy, great skin tone. Uh, great, you know, you know, vibrance coming off her. She was extremely magnetic and sexy, extremely. But nothing about her looked forced or fake, including the muscles that she had built and the way that her body moved. It was really, she really stood out quite a bit. Then the guy in his 70s was the same way. Older gentleman, lifted weights, tons of energy. When he talked to you, he, he was very confident. Didn't take any supplements. I remember we had a, a two-hour conversation where I was com- trying to convince him that supplements were a good thing because that's when I was super brainwashed and he was trying to convince me that no, he hasn't taken a supplement in something like 40 years and it's a waste of money. And again, this guy looked incredible. Now, I've met 70-year-olds who were more ripped and more buffed, uh, but he just uh, exuded this vibrance and this confidence. And I remember looking at them and thinking, uh, man, these guys have incredible genetics. When in reality, reality, they really were just being their true 
their true selves. So it is possible to get there, I promise you. Focus on the inside and you'll get the outside. Work in before you work out. Uh, it makes a huge difference. And if the goal is to be attractive to people, there's nothing that's more attractive than that. And there's exactly. not that many 25-year-olds and 30-year-olds that are that ha- that have that aura around them and around that, that kind of air of confidence. If you can find put the work in to be one of those people, like you're going to just going to fundamentally change your life. Exactly. Spoken like a very intelligent millennial. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, until we go there, how do you imp- uh, pinpoint food intolerances if they are mainly affect the mind? Ooh. This is a good question because This is such a good question because I give Sal shit about this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> he, I don't know why. Cuz you're he's Mr. like he feels everything. <laughs> you know what? You know what? Here's the thing. Uh you would be surprised, shocked, uh, and we know this as trainers. We've been training people for a long time at how disconnected people are to their bodies. Com- like so disconnected that, and I'll give you an easy exa- like easy examples. Like I'll be training a client and we'll be doing a tricep press down or a row or a bicep curl or very basic movement and I'm watching their form so they're obviously doing it okay. And they'll, they'll ask me, where am I supposed to feel this? You actually hear that quite a bit. Yeah. Super uh, common, and I, you know, when I first heard it, when I first became a personal, you, trainer, I used to fuck with my clients just to mess with them. Like, oh, this is for your face right here. Yeah, <laughs> it's your face. but for it's, your feet, right? We're doing tricep push downs. Like, you feel it in your feet, right? It's super, <laughs> super, super common. It is. It's not uncommon at all. And it used to blow me away. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Obviously, it's your triceps. You can't feel your triceps, and it's not that their triceps aren't working and that their brain isn't getting the signal for their triceps to move and work. It's that they're literally so disconnected yeah. that they don't understand what that means. Their brain isn't perceiving it. And it reminds me of, have you, got, you guys have heard the stories of the Native Americans when they were at, on the shore and, Chris, you know, and Christopher Columbus was appearing, you know, the ships were appearing out in the ocean and the Native Americans didn't see the ships until they were fucking really close. They didn't see them. Oh, because it was almost like a mirage to them because they didn't realize what it was. Because they'd never, never seen, seen anything like They'd never before. seen them. They couldn't perceive them. And so to them, it was like there was nothing there. They just couldn't see them. Um, it's similar to that. Like people are so disconnected to their bodies. I'll train clients who have such poor health in the sense that, uh, you know, inflamed, obese, no activity for 15 years that, uh, and I was, I'll think to myself like, Holy shit, how can someone live like that? Like, how is someone walking around every day, waking up in the morning, needing two cups of coffee just to get going, barely drinks any water, eats processed and packaged food all the time, is 60 pounds overweight, at night needs a glass or two of wine just to settle down, and they do this every single day of their life. Like, how do they not know that they feel horrible? And really, it's about this incredible, massive disconnect to their body and so that's an extreme form of this now most people who work out consistently have better body awareness than most people but when it comes to food a lot of times not quite in fact those of us in fitness who eat to build muscle or eat to burn fat we tend to disconnect our bodies from food uh as a uh, as a tool as or as a as a way to help us lose weight or gain weight like i would do this like i, I would force feed myself right and I would disconnect myself from food that I didn't like the taste of. I'd, I'd, you know, I'd drink these shakes that were fucking horrible. I used to make tuna fish shakes. No, I'm, not, I'm not bullshitting you. Like, fucking disgusting, but it's almost like I didn't taste them. I disconnected from the fact that I was so full from eating so much food. And looking back, I realized that it was, a, it was purposeful. And then it became a very effective tool for me, and I just stuck with it. And so you get that a lot uh, with people. And so food intolerance is can be uh, very obvious uh, and that's usually where I start with people is the obvious signs like gastro you know issues you know bloating constipation diarrhea uh, uh, you know skin issues like acne psoriasis um, maybe you know really bad inflammation like those are the obvious ones but then as you go down the line it becomes more and more difficult and it requires you to become more and more connected like you know I'm, I'll be working with a client and after a few months, they'll start to make the connection that eating this particular you know, oatmeal or whatever every morning makes them feel uh, sluggish. Like they, they didn't put that together until three months into becoming more aware of how their, their well, body is Well, this is where, this is where, did we, Doug, did we put, um, did we put the elimination diet inside the new, the new nutrition guide that's coming out? Did we do that? Do you guys know? I think we're adding that We're going sure. to. Okay, yeah. so yeah, yeah super handy. we definitely have to because of this, this question just reminds me of, you know, a little less woo-woo, um, 
about this, a very simple thing that I've done with all my clients when I'm trying to help them this, because this is tough. Like Sal is saying, so many people are feeding their body with so much garbage and shit. It's so hard for them to like connect the dots of like what's making you feel like crap. It's like, well, was it the fucking bag of potato chips you had? Or was it the Ben and Jerry's ice cream you had? Or was it the fucking wine you washed down before that? Or is it because the lack of sleep you had for the last two nights and all the stress you have at work and all the people you hate? Like, I mean, so trying to put connect those dots is incredibly difficult when you talk about something so uh, so subtle like intolerances. So the elimina- elimination diet is incredible for this. And this will be in the new nutrition guide, that the uh, 2.0 version that we release soon. And... The idea behind this is that you strip away all all these all the main things, right? Like gluten, sugar, dairy, dairy, nuts, yeah, nuts, all the common ones, right? Right. All you strip away all the, the the common ones, and then you slowly introduce one at a time, and then you assess. And it's amazing once you do that. But you first have to go through and do your due diligence and and take all that out and be consistent like that for a while. For me, like it's got to be several. So clients, for I would make them for at least a month. So I don't know where how long you mm-hmm. make somebody do it for, but for a month, I want all that out. So I'm just like, listen, if you're if this is something we're really trying to solve, I need you to be really strict for a month for me and eliminate all these foods, and then we're gonna slowly introduce one at a time, and then we're gonna talk about how you feel. We're gonna talk about your sleep. We're gonna talk about your energy. We're gonna talk about your skin. We're gonna talk about if any sort of react your your digestion, your stomach, your stool. Like we're gonna, I'm gonna ask all those questions, and if everything feels great as we introduce, like let's say we we start to reintroduce dairy, and like you're good, no problems, you're not having any digestion problems, skin's great, everything's fine, sleep's good, no headaches, everything's is positive. Well, it's probably not that we're okay, and then you you and I tell you what, when you've pulled it all out of your diet, and then you do after for like a good solid month, and if you can go longer, that's even better, right? The longer you can pull it out and then reintroduce it, I feel like the the louder the signal is. Yeah. Like it, it's, the bigger the contrast. Right, yeah, exactly. Sure. Like when you've been really, really good about eating whole foods for a long period of time, and then all of a sudden I have something that is like out of that, my body like tells me right after I eat it. Like it's it, it announced, I'm on the toilet right away, <laughs> you know, or right away like my I feel bloated and, or right away like my skin gets itchy or I get some sort of a headache. Or It's a, also it's also real important though because we're, you know, you're talking a lot about all the physical uh, signs, right? And the physical signs are the Right, there's step. one exactly. The the what I what I'll have people do when they're ready is I'll have them track all these physical signs and then I'll have them track the mental and emotional signs. So I'll tell them, you know, several times a day, I want you to record your mood. I want you to, yeah, and it does two things. It's just like when you track your food. Isn't there an app for that? Is that Headspace who does that? I what, don't know what app does that. I don't, um, Muse. Muse, yeah, oh, okay. Muse. interesting. Yeah, I'm, so, not, I'm not super familiar with it. There is, there is an app. There's an app that. Yeah. There's an app for that. So I'll. So there's an app for everything. And, and, actually, and right? just like when people start tracking, <laughs> what is there an app not for? Exactly. It's totally not useful, <laughs> Adam. <laughs> so, so when people track their food, for example, they will find that they're more aware now of what they're eating just because they're tracking. So that happens when you also track your moods and your emotions, like your moods, like moods. Okay. So they'll well, be like, library? like, oh God, I didn't realize uh, I was in, you know, just in a bad mood, you know, every morning. Like, why? That's weird because. You know, I, now that I'm writing it down, holy shit. So that's number one. You become more aware of how you feel emotionally and mentally. And then number two, you, you can start to connect the dots because it's written down. And you'll start to notice patterns like, wow, after coffee, an hour later, I'm irritable every single time. Could I possibly have an intolerance to coffee? And yes, you can. Right. Uh, so you know, write these things down and take note of a, a lot of things beside also you know, including your, your physical signs. So the, physical, the emotional. Five minute journal is really good for that because it, it has that lay, easy layout for morning journaling that's really short. Is that sweet. an app? It's a journal. It's a physical journal. Oh, it's a physical journal. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, they have an app too. I bet you they have an app. He's going yeah, back. But, He's but going there, old school. But there is, there's something about writing <laughs> so it that crazy. definitely helps. You, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's hip now to write with pens and your hand paper. Oh, it's going. It's yeah, coming it's getting, back it's, in style. It's coming back. Dude. Oh, it's coming back in style. I have three journals in my bag out there. God. But um, yeah. So then you get because you get a morning and an evening kind of check in with yourself, and there's some there's an easy guide there. That's fucking. I did notice that you and Taylor both have the same little yeah, journal book you guys write in. Only yours is bigger. His is smaller. He he has more than me. He has like three of them. I have just have one big one. Oh, mm. All right. but well, either, either that or he's, not, either that or he's not trying to overcompensate for something. Oh, maybe so. Yeah. Maybe because, maybe because my, <laughs> my, my bun's bigger than his. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! We're getting into a hair competition here. Yes. <laughs> it's a walk off. It's a hair off. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, those just check-ins with yourself mentally. That's that's a huge piece. And adding adding things back in progressively after elimination diet is also super clutch too. Because if you go thirty days like um a thirty day super strict elimination diet, and then you just add everything back in at the same time at the end, like go back to normal, go go balls deep. Like you're you're gonna you don't know what was actually yeah, causing no, the problems in the first introduce place. Introduce one so. at a time, and then but it's actually it. the it's really the most simple way to go about figuring out what the fuck's going on. You can also and tracking t- and, and eliminating. You can, it's it, that's the best way is elimination diet. The se- another thing you can do and it's not as is effective, but it's faster and easier. And I know people like that. Something called a pinner test that you can buy. And how uh, accurate is that? So there's a lot of debate about it. Yeah. Now I, mean, I know I know you know naturopaths who love using a pinner test and it directs them. Here's the problem. Is there an at home or do you have to go somewhere? No, to it's get, at home. You can do an at home test. Yeah, you, you you do a little. Can you put that in the show notes, Doug? What's yeah, it called? A pinner test. P i n n e r. So I, here's I like to try it out. here's the here's what the way I've used pinner tests in the past. I worked with someone who was uh, certified to use them or to read the the results. She would have people do a pinner test and then that would direct her on how to tell people to start the elimination diet because we're talking about common food intolerances like dairy, gluten, you know, nuts, egg whites, those types of things. However, you can be intolerant to anything. Uh, I've seen people have intolerances to bananas, you know, rice, uh, chicken breast. I mean, little things that are normally fine for most people, you may have developed an intolerance to. So when people take the pinner test, it'll say, okay, here's the things we're going to eliminate, uh, at, we're going to start your elimination diet with because it sucks. And I've seen this happen where people do an elimination diet and get no, no changes. And it's like, oh, fuck, it must be something else. It must not be one of the common food intolerances. So you can look into that. They cost about 200, I think, to $400. Uh, also, also check out uh, Rob Wolf and Wire to Eat. That, that'll give you some insight too. Like mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't pay attention. I think they'll give you some good direction too. So check Definitely. that out. Rob, Rob's show. been preaching elimination diet for a decade, yeah. So yeah. For this, from what I know, so he's he has a lot of articles out on. Yeah, on check his check his wire. To eat. He just released that book just recently, and and if you haven't listened to the episode we did with him, we got into a little bit of this. So for sure. Next up, Douglas. All right. Next question is from Burr's Lurker. Oh, that's how you say. It. I could not. I don't know. I just made that's that up. pretty good. That's pretty good. I think that's what it yeah. is. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be it. Did Lane Norton change your minds on anything? Absolutely. One hundred percent. Oh, I, 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 next question. I, th- I thought, I, <laughs> <laughs> I, thought uh, I thought I would hate him. That's what he changed my mind on. Yeah, uh, let's let's first talk about like. So I I've uh, been a big fan of Lane Norton for a long time, and so I've always really liked him. And I fall. I listen to his out of any out of all the podcasts we listen to. I've listened to more Lane Norton than anything else. So, and I found him when I was competing, and what I was what I was drawn to was literally he was the first. And not to say there's not others, but he was the first intelligent like bodybuilder guy that uh, that was talking like intelligently about nutrition and prep that drew me to him. I was like, finally, somebody that like understands like a little bit of health and like is speaking out on all these terrible coaches that are coaching these athletes. So I already really liked him. I knew the boys were a little more hesitant when I brought him in, but. You know what was it most about him that, that? Well, so I so I always respected him. I, I didn't think he was a an idiot. Um, I didn't think he was you know one of those horrible people in the fitness industry that you know I rail against. I just thought I wouldn't like him. But when he came in uh, and we met him, he's a cool dude. He's a really cool dude. He definitely uh, you know has a lot of integrity and believes in what he preaches. Not because uh, I don't think he has ulterior motives. Of course, there's always a conflict of interest. I know he sells supplements, and so he tends he does su- say that artificial sweeteners are, are safe, and you know he's big IIFOM guy. And so there, there's uh, I, there's there's going to be a uh, you know conflict of interest there, right? He's obviously selling products with these types of things, but uh, he's a cool guy. I really I really enjoyed the guy. Now, as far as changing my mind on my opinions on things like nutrition, no, not at all. In fact. Um, he was he's nowhere near as extreme as the idiots on Instagram who promote IIFOM. He's very much like a, you know, eat healthy most of the time and if you eat a little bit it's okay and if it does fit your macros and you're in a deficit it's probably not it's not going to do as much damage to you or as it could or whatever and there wasn't any there wasn't a lot of stuff he said that I completely disagreed with. The disagreement, I guarantee you the disagreements we will have and we can debate and talk about uh, start and end with uh, processed foods and GMOs and artificial sweeteners. Um, he doesn't have an approach with IIFOM like you see there, the, on the Instagram. The stuff. biggest thing that I think I think because the way he um, 
argued his point makes a ton of sense, right? And I think he brings very, very valid points to his theory behind IIFYM. Now, the difference between him and I think us is that we have trained thousands of clients and one-on-one, standing and sitting across the desk from me. And most of our clients are regular people. Yes. He's trained a lot of athletes. athletes. Yeah. And even even the the amount that he has like is nowhere near the amount of FaceTime the the three of us have combined nowhere near mm-hmm. you know, carry, carry. and someone's like oh that can matter he was doing his PhD no no, no. what where I'm ga- going with this is the psychological side is in my opinion the biggest piece of course and there is such a large piece of that that is connected to these people and I know he, and this is where we disagree is the being addicted to foods. And you can he, he where he likes to argue it is that there's no science that supports that there's a chemical addiction that's happening to carbohydrates or sugar, which we can go round and round with that argument with him. And and he definitely didn't change our minds on that. But one thing that you can't argue is that there most certainly can be and is more often a psychological addiction that these people have with foods. And so for me. It, the IIFYM, it's funny you're wearing the IIFYM suck shirt right now, yeah, too, yeah. Right? why this comes up. is <laughs> Serendipitous, is the, it? There is nothing, there is no bit of science that will ever come out that could get me to change my mind about IIFYM because I think it's an excellent place for people to start. I think it's where I started. I think that everybody should start by counting your macros. But I think that's begin that that is the that's the first good step in the right direction. And quite frankly, I just don't think Lane hasn't had to go to the point where he has to dive into the psychological side. That's it because he can he can he can figure it out all numbers and it works for him and it's worked for his clients to get in aesthetic shape, but we talk in a much deeper level. And when we talk about relationship with food and we talk about the psychological addictions that people have with food, that stuff kind of goes out the window. It does. And, you know, ask yourself this. Do you want to be counting your macros and calories for the rest of your life? And if that scares you because you think you're going to get fat, well, there's there's your problem. And that's one of the main issues with IIFYM <laughs> is it teaches people – uh, and it's fine. That's where you start. Like Adam said, you need to know what's in food. You need to know what macronutrients like proteins, fats, and carbs. You need to know the calories. You need to understand, you know, how much you're eating and, you know, you know what, what macro profile probably feels best to you. But if you stay there, it will, or I'm sorry, it can and most likely will turn into a bad relationship with food. And we've seen it time and time and time again. I've now I've worked with a lot of people who've gone the IIFRM route and stayed there for years. And the second I tell them to go off and go intuitive, they freak out. It becomes their security they're, blanket. They're training wheels. They're training wheels. It's it, it's a difficult. It's a, it's not a good place to stay in. Well, so. and the people that actually have success with it, the irony is that the ones that think that oh, it's it, that think it's so great and it works so well with them are the ones that are using terms like oh, I, I get my cheat day and I can have like their relationship. They don't even realize that yeah, that's fucked be, up because it's working for them physically. They still haven't broke through to the psychological part and the part with the relationship with the food. They haven't got there yet, and so they're they're not, they haven't even identified that yet. And because they're they're in the shape they want to be physically, they still haven't reached that point where they're starting to connect the dots with their connection with the food. And I get that. I totally get that. I was there. I, I mean, at one point, all of us were there, right? Where we were so aesthetically driven that you didn't. As long as I saw the results that I wanted. It works, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And if the science supports that it works, it's good. And it's like, no, it's not that simple. I'll I'll give you an example. You know, you'll have a a woman who is doing IIFYM and counting her macros and staying very, you know, good within her macro range to maintain her body and she's lean and fit and all that stuff. And she does this religiously and consistently and a vacation's coming up. So she's going to go for two weeks to, uh, I don't know, France or Hawaii or something like that. So she's ma- counting macros, counting macros, counting macros on this this you know on this particular uh, diet, if you will, and then she goes on vacation and she's like, "I'm just going to enjoy myself now." Right right away, I want you to just hear what I'm saying. I'm going to just enjoy myself. They go on this trip. They stop counting macros. Here's inevitably what happens: they binge or they eat way more than they normally would, or they indulge in ways that are unhealthy for the both the mind and the body. And then they come back and they're like, fuck, I got to get back on my program. I got to get back on IIFYM. Now, 
In contrast, if you have someone who has a very healthy relationship with themselves and with food, and they eat healthy and they nourish their body, when they go on this trip, they go and they enjoy the foods that are there. Like they're in France or they're in Hawaii and they're, they're, they're tasting the local foods and they're enjoying themselves. But it's not this fucking big deal where, oh, yes, I go... I'm going on vacation. I get to eat all the fucking food I ever want to eat. Like, here's the bottom line. Like, if you live in fucking America, you can get all the food, pretty much a lot of the food you can get in Hawaii or a lot of the food you can get in Mexico or a lot of the food you can get in France. But why the, do you all of a sudden get so excited to go on vacation and ha- eat like a fucking maniac? It's because you're in this I can and I can't mentality. And IIF Lamb feeds right into that. There is no I can and I can't. There is no I can't eat that, that- or I can't eat that. There is I choose to eat that and I choose to eat this. That's all. It's there's. That's all it is. It's the psychological side that we hundred percent. You know, the th- I do want to say this though. Like I think that what Lane is doing and what he started. Like I think he, he, in my opinion, was one of the first to really come out and come after the bro science aggressively. And he was the first kind of bigger name and really intelligent guy that could attack that. And for that. I give him a ton of credit, a ton of kudos, and I respect the man for sure. Like, I really, truly like Lane Norton a lot. Uh, It's just we have a different stance about uh, a trend, which which I'll tell you right now, those of you that attach yourselves to it, it's a fucking trend. It will crash. Mark my fucking words. Mm -hmm. It will be looked at just like the Atkins diet or anything or zone diet or any trendy ass thing. It's, it's just one step to help people lose weight and or gain weight. There's so much more to eating and working out and being healthy than just simply counting the fucking numbers, mm-hmm. and you will fucking see. Yeah. Our next question is from Eat, Sleep, and Run. If you guys could eat and drink anything without consequence... <laughs> what a great follow-up to that. <laughs> yeah, <no. laughs> what would it be? Uh, anything that fits my macros. <laughs> <laughs> Diet soda. You know, this is a funny question because... Well, it's really funny because we... And we didn't mean to do this, and it follows up that Lane right Norton question, right? Because yeah. then we're going to turn around and be like, I wish I could have Ben and Jerry's yeah. every single night. Uh, <laughs> you know, so here's here's why this question is, is funny to me, because I can't eat uh, anything that I want. The consequences are... Uh, you know, okay, I guess the way to answer this question She worded would be, it beautifully, though, because yeah. she said that. If you guys could eat and drink anything you want without consequences, because yeah. you know that like there are- Like if it was just pure taste. Exactly. Yeah, okay. well, you got to define consequences, too. Yeah. Yeah, because, well, <laughs> well, the consequences are the, the physical consequences. Yeah, like you feel like shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And not even just that. that it, I mean, let's be honest. When you eat- The shame. If you eat something <laughs> that is that is like, 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 well, I'll say like my red velvet cake I love, it's just- it's not filled with a lot of beneficial nutrients in it. So I couldn't eat all my calories in that because I'm missing so many other things, right? So if those, that's the consequence. Yeah. The consequence is you load up all your calories on something that is not very beneficial for the body. And so it's not ideal for it. So there's your consequence. Yeah. So if that didn't count, like if it did, like let's say red velvet cake was just perfect for my body and what it needed, what food would you eat or consume a ton of or I, more? Uh, I guess for me... Don't just purely you, based on taste. Don't you dare say something stupid. No, I'm not. I'm okay. not gonna say something. Broccoli. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, I was gonna, uh, I was gonna throw yeah, my phone yeah, at him. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> uh, probably potato sardines chips. sardines and avocados. No, no, probably <laughs> uh, probably basic uh, Lay's potato chips. Oh wow! Fucking, yeah, they're they're you're, I, you're a salty potato chip I, guy. Yeah, dude. I love them. Absolutely love you them. You can't just eat one. No, and I like the taste. I like the taste a lot. They're super convenient. You just you know put them in your face and. <laughs> Eat them. So, yeah, ready yeah. to go. What about you, Sea Dog? Uh, <laughs> breakfast. Like, well, I had to use the term. He just called him Sea Dog. Everybody's that's first just, that dog. Sal's creative nicknames for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> cereal, man. I don't know. Oh, which, cereal, cereal guy. Okay. Oh, what kind what, of cereal? What kind? Yeah, you got to be more specific than that. Do you guys remember O's? They like cut the shit out of the roof of your, roof of your mouth. But the, they were the so apple, good. apple it O's. Was like, it was O's, but it had like, apple it, was O's? Like a, it looked like a Cheerio, but bigger, and it had like a cluster. Apple of, O's. It wasn't apple though. They, they had apple flavor ones. They yeah, did. The, but the green, the, the green box. No, you're, you're thinking the yellow oh, box. You're talking about the broke ass O's, the ones that you no, got in no, the in the no. clear bag that you're your talking mom, about. That like, your mom got you. You're talking about like the sequel to O's. Is apple O's? That was like the next thing. No, O's with the original like fucking. They're gangster ass cereal. Really, Doug? I think you need to research this. I don't think Apple. O's, I think he's wrong. No, O's yeah. are first. Yeah. Apple. O's, why would they this name him? This is a typical millennial mistake. Right here. <laughs> <laughs> talking about cereal history, thinking that he knows what he's talking about. I, I don't think. No, he's to, got it. He's got it right here. Does he? Let me see. I found it. Do I have to apologize? Wow, bro, you're you're really you're into. Good at, you're good at googling, like Sal. Bro, this is like a this is a straight up. Oh, that's what you, I don't even know what that is. O's, dude. 
You know oh, what? You know I what? totally was. Oh, what a what yeah. a what a they they discontinued this shit probably. That was so good. What a, what a uh, obscure cereal that you like. No, I don't know why I liked it so much. That it is was weird. like it okay, was really I sweet. Do, but it, was, okay. it was also very. Like, I love was, to do this with somebody, right? Because okay. it is something odd like that. Go back, bro. Go back to where you were in your life. You know where when, you when, when you're eating O's. Yeah, when you were eating O's. What were you? What? Oh, I'll tell you. Yeah, that's that's not even hard. So I lived it was when I was I lived with my grandparents growing up. Okay, so that was like my thing after school. I'd come home and eat a fucking bowl of O's. Okay. And it was like we would stop at Dairy Queen on the way in to get like a sausage McMuffin or whatever for breakfast. And then when I got home, I was, I mean, it was like it was a it was a big bowl. It's probably contributed a lot to my childhood obesity. <laughs> well, and at that time too, I mean, uh, can the you consequences think of like, were real. <laughs> how old you were, and friends, and playing, and your love for your parents. Like, it was a good time in your life. Yeah, it was like right before yeah. I went outside and like played around. We yeah, had a lot, a lot of mean. land, and we would you know just go. I like, go ride the four wheelers. Isn't that crazy? I mean, up to like you're like probably my like. 12, 13 years old I was doing that. Don't you find that crazy though how we connect things like that like, of course. like with experiences in no, your no. life and it's something that you absolutely love and then you go back and you revisit it like now is it like let's say something I you maybe you hadn't had those O's in like 20 years and then you go back and you eat it and you're like this was much better when I was well yeah. either <laughs> yeah, absolutely. E- either that or he still enjoys it because he's made that association yeah right like, yeah, it, it, it like brings memories back like watching an old movie you know it's the same type of thing like you just oh yeah this, this is where I was when that was going on it just goes to show you how your connection to food isn't just the taste yeah, there's a it's a it's a lot of uh, the stuff that was going on. Like like like, why the fuck do people like mac and cheese from the box? It tastes like garbage. It tastes, it tastes like, like shit. shit. <laughs> yeah. But a lot of people were giving it to them when they were when they were a kid, and mom gave it to them, and they had a good time. And so they're like, oh yeah, comfort food. Why is it comfortable? Yeah. If you've never had mac and cheese and you're an adult, and I give you mac and cheese craft from the box, I guarantee you, every single one of you is going to be like. This tastes like plastic shit. <laughs> I'll still eat it every once in a while. Yeah, but if you, like, yeah. even if you think about it, I was to eat like biscuits and gravy right now, like some dope biscuits and gravy. I'd be <sighs> like, man, my grandma was so cool. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> what I would think. I was like, she was so dope. So <laughs> it's, you know, right in line with you on this is I would say um, I would I would love a waffle cone with uh, mint chip ice cream, then chocolate chip and then coconut pineapple in that order in a waffle cone from Thrifty's. That's about as specific I would, as it gets. Man. Well, yeah, so I would, I would, well, I probably did eat that every day of my life for quite some t- for a couple of years of my life. <laughs> <laughs> so if I could uh, have the physique feel great, because now that would be on the toilet right afterwards from something like that, that would be something that I would eat on a very consistent basis for sure. Ugh. Yeah, I don't know. I, don't know if I, I couldn't eat O's right now. I couldn't eat the. I couldn't do the milk in it. I kind of want to. I kind of want to search that out and try that. Does milk make you shit yourself now? I can't yeah, believe I've like never that. had. Yeah, just, oh, I don't feel good at all. Honey, really? honey Graham yeah. made it, so it's made by Honey Graham. Yeah, so it tastes like a Honey Graham, Post. but then all the little it has little. Yeah, Post like, is the brand, but Honey Graham is granola the, type things in the center. And the, See, the thing about it is, the milk actually so did it come, so good. So did it come before Honey Grams or after Honey Grams? I don't know. That's an old looking label. I don't know. It is old looking. That's a. That's if a. You guys ever buy it at Target and Walmart? You still can. Yeah, mm. this is you can order right here. I well, think uh, I think we should ship it here. Disgusting. Right. Uh, you know what? Before we start, <laughs> cheat day. Before we start to sign off, I do want to make a, a statement. We've talked about uh, artificial sweeteners now for a while um, on the podcast, and I, way back when we first started, we predicted that you would see a huge shift in supplements. Oh, you see, you're talking about Evo, Evo Gin right now? Well, you, uh, here they come. Mark, my, we've said this before. You don't believe me. Go lo- listen to some of our, our real old episodes where, right. I, where I specifically said this, and we brought up Lane Norton with his position on artificial sweeteners. All of them, all of them will eventually have to flavor their shit uh, naturally because the market is already starting to shift. More studies are coming out showing that artificial sweeteners fundamentally alter gut flora and that is influencing things like cravings. Remember where you heard that how shit? Could, how could something that makes a pre-workout laser green not fuck with your gut floor? <laughs> like, is this like, it's like, oh, is that surprising to anyone? Like, that shit will fuck you up. Are you serious? Yeah. Like, and that's the thing, too. It's like, when you're chasing, like, what, 30 seconds of mouth pleasure by tasting kind of like Kool Aid? Yeah. Like, get your fucking shit together and take some stuff that doesn't taste like fucking Kool Aid. Well, we Throw actually, the fuck up. We, when we first started, we <laughs> offered our formula that we all do, which is like, was just the know, wrong ingredients. Yeah, five. Yeah. Right, and it, it tastes like shit, and you just swall, chug it down real quick. But it had all the, the actual things that had any sort of science supporting, you know, the increased energy or blood flow or pump or yeah. whatever that you could get from a pre workout. But all the natural raw ingredients. But I, I just love to see the market shift. Like now, we're like Evo Gen has released some supplements now. You know, not, not all natural, no artificial colors and flavors. And you're going to start to see some of the bigger brands. Cellucor, I think, uh, you know, is doing some of this yeah, stuff yeah. and. 
Uh, it's it's they starting just launched, to happen. They they actually Cellucor is really smart on how they did it because they actually separated it from the brand. That like way, Coke, Coke did the same thing with the green. By the way, we don't have those in Texas. By the way, but, no. But guess what I saw the other day on fucking regular TV? Now commercials. A straight it. up Coca Cola green you know, Coca Cola. You know, commercial. fucking showed you guys that a long time ago, and, bro. And, and, but we called it, man. Oh, it was. You know what's crazy was I I saw that I had my first one like fuck it's three four years ago. And when I saw it and I was like, holy shit, like if Coca-Cola gets it, but I thought it was so crazy that they had a product like that for so long, but did not rep it, did not promote it. it. They had to be careful because they, it was, they had to be careful to rep it because pushing a Coke that's half flavored with cane sugar, not high fructose corn syrup and half flavored with stevia could potentially damage their brand because it would be like them saying, here's something that's better than the product that we already have. Right. So yeah. they had to be very, very careful. Yeah, well, make- and, they're, and they're real they're real strict in their formula too. Like if it, they put it out on like mass quantities like that, like a lot of like Pepsi Zero and stuff like that made mistakes where they, they it tastes kind of like the same thing, but it kind of just sucked. And it, but it took it took mass. What did like, you market, was market that your that first action. green Coke you had at my house? Yeah, it was good. Did you like it? Yeah, yeah. And I like Coke too. I drink I eat Coke Zero every now and then. I'll have one of those, but I'd rather have the green Coke than Coke Zero. Yeah. Well, so here's, a, here's they're going they're going to take market share away from themselves. Is probably you know. So I, I do want to say this because now that I see the market shifting, you're going to see stevia and everything, and I oh, do, it's already getting there, dude. And, yeah. And I do believe stevia is better than the artificial sweeteners, but I do not believe it's better than nothing. I do think you can overconsume stevia, yeah. and I'll tell you t- two things. Number one, uh, anytime you uh, you trigger the sensation of sweetness, remember that's a signal that goes to your brain. There are receptors on your tongue that certain chemicals, even natural ones, will attach to, and then your brain perceives them as sweet. Now, what always follows sweet from an evolutionary standpoint is things that taste sweet that have calories, like sugar. If your body senses or your brain senses sweet and no sugar comes in, you can, and I, I, I promise you, will create problems because your brain thinks sweet's coming in, it's preparing your body for sugar, it's changing insulin, it's changing all these different things that are happening, but it's not getting it. So it could either A, change cravings, or B, it's maybe like I, even- It's like I tell people with like a PC computer and downloading porn, eventually you're going to get a virus if you watch too much porn on <laughs> yeah. your PC. Like, it's just- Who the fuck downloads porn nowadays? <laughs> downloading shit, dude. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with you? Oh, oh that's uh, that's what's wrong. Yeah. In case the lights go out, <laughs> case- I mean, I, I'm going to download this for emergency situations in case I, just, I don't get power. It just shows you how much I actually really watch, right? Yeah. <laughs> you fucking download but yeah, uh, by the DVD. Yeah, I, if you're, go- <laughs> you're going to take something that's sweet, without sugar, uh, it, stevia is a better option. I still don't think you should have stevia all the time. Well, but yeah, and even when it comes to supplements and stuff, like one of the things I did that I really liked was that I, I would buy the unflavored supplements, and then I would, if I needed them, to, the flavor to be different, I just took control of that. I would change. Yeah. I would sweeten it with fruit or whatever, whatever it was that I wanted. But it would. I would. I was the. I was the throttle of the sh- of the sweetness, mm-hmm. not, Dude, can not I, the people selling me. The can shit. I tell you guys something? And this is completely anecdotal, but. It, talking about this reminds Doesn't me count. when I when I was competing right and when I had to go months on end of just whole natural food super strict eating in a, in a caloric deficit when I would eat fruit after that whole fruit like it, it I I could not believe how sweet an apple or a grape or an orange like it was so fulfilling on such another level. And it was like this, it was such a, a major eye opener for me because it wasn't like I wasn't a fruit eater before. It's just that I was inundating my body with so much of this processed fake and all this other sugar from everywhere else that when I got it from a natural source, it wasn't as rewarding because it wasn't as explosive in my mouth because I'm so used to getting something that uh, that had 60 grams of sugar from somewhere else or all this artificial sweetener from another place all throughout my day. And it wasn't until I completely eliminated that into the diet, and then I introduced things that were like strawberries and blueberries, bananas. When I started, when I started to do that, it was like, whoa, dude! Like you, mm-hmm. it's amazing how fulfilling that was. And for some, and I'm, I have a sweet tooth, right? So I'd be considered somebody who, like, I, you know, ice cream, right? We all talked about the foods we want. You want it salty? I'm sweet. Like I want it. I want. I want sugar. That's what I want because I've fucking had that my entire life. So. When I had when I eliminated everything and then I reintroduced it, it's amazing 
how good fruit would. And so if you're somebody who craves sugar a lot, that's something that I urge you to do is to actually eliminate all that, all the process. And then all, all the, of a sudden fruit is candy. Yeah, exactly. And then like a fruit literally tastes like I'm eating candy. It's, it's amazing. And it's beautiful. Yeah. It's I, a beautiful thing. Uh, I'll tell you this too. There's an article um, if you want to really look into artificial sweeteners. And I'm telling you right now, first of all, two things. Number one, the way artificial sweeteners got approved the true story behind it will blow your fucking mind, I promise you. Just that alone will make you never want to have an artificial sweetener again. Uh, it was There was a great article by, uh, I think Vice, um, I think Vice Magazine was the uh, was the place that, that uh, posted it, or Tonic, sorry, tonic.vice.com. And there's an article titled, uh, The Story of How Fake Sugar Got Approved is Scary as Hell. Look it up. It's a true story. I've read it before. Uh, no one disputes didn't you, it. Didn't you post that on your- I posted a bunch of this on my Instagram a while ago fucking crazy and then people who say there's no evidence to show that artificial sweeteners are bad for you are full of shit there's long-term studies that have associated uh aspartame for example with uh, non-hodgkin's lymphomas and multiple myeloma in men and leukemia in both men and women there are studies that show neurological issues in animals cancer in animals uh it, scientists will tell you that like the that are non-biased will tell you that uh, they're concerned and they probably don't recommend people do it. Uh, so look it up for yourself. Read about it. Don't look at the, the bias shit. Just, and really, if you just go beyond that, just literally learn about how they got approved. And if that doesn't freaking you know, set off bells and whistles in your, in your brain, then, then nothing will. Um, and so with that, check this out. Go to mindpumpmedia.com and opt in for 30 days of coaching. It's still free. We still got it. It's still free. Also, look us up on Instagram. If you want us to answer one of your questions on air, go to Instagram. We'll post a, a picture under our Instagram page, which is Mind Pump Media, uh, and it says something like, ask your questions here or qua. Ask them underneath there. The odds that we'll ask, uh, answer your question on air are actually pretty good. We'll get about 100 and some odd questions, and we end up answering about you know 8 to 10 a week, so you get about a 10% chance. So you know, put a good question there. We'll probably answer it. If you want uh, more fitness information, we all have our own personal Instagram pages. Mine is Mind Pump Sal. Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. And also check out our boy Connor, who's our guest host today. Mm -hmm. uh, he's got a pretty cool, pretty cool page. He's a very, very smart guy. Um, very fitness, wellness, uh, you know, self fulfillment, psychedelics. I mean, the guy just runs the gamut of, of uh, subjects that he's really into. His Instagram page is Connor Wanders. Uh, right. and check it out thank you for listening to mind pump if your goal is to build and shape your body dramatically improve your health and energy and maximize your overall performance check out our discounted rgb super bundle at mindpumpmedia.com the rgb super bundle includes maps anabolic maps performance and maps aesthetic nine months of phased expert exercise programming designed by Sal, Adam, and Justin to systematically transform the way your body looks, feels, and performs. With detailed workout blueprints and over 200 videos, the RGB Super Bundle is like having Sal, Adam, and Justin as your own personal trainers, but at a fraction of the price. The RGB Super Bundle has a full 30-day money-back guarantee, and you can get it now, plus other valuable free resources at mindpumpmedia.com. If you enjoy this show, please share the love by leaving us a five-star rating and review on iTunes and by introducing Mind Pump to your friends and family. We thank you for your support, and until next time, this is Mind Pump.